Okay, the time is now 6.30, so I will call to order this regular meeting of the West Valley City Council uh, today, which is Tuesday, August 11th, promptly at 6.30. By way of roll call, you'll notice there are two empty seats up here on the dais, and those are uh, for excused council members Lars Nordfeld and Mayor Ron Bigelow, uh, who have asked to be excused from all of tonight's proceedings. Also joining us on the dais are our city recorder, Ms. Sherry McKendrick, and our acting uh, city manager, Mr. Paul Isaac, who will uh, help us as we conduct uh, our city council business tonight. Item three on our agenda is our opening ceremony, which we assign to a council member uh, each week to set the tone of the meeting, and it can range anywhere from uh, a joke to a prayer, and so but tonight's responsibility falls to District 1 council member Tom Hume. Council member, take it away. Thank you, uh, Board Tam, Mayor. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I just invite all of you to stand up with me and do the best of the legend. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Hume, for that. Uh, item four is the time on our agenda that we set aside for any special recognitions. And uh, we don't have any dignitaries visiting us tonight, but we do have two uh, scouts with us that are uh, here working on a project. So we'll uh, uh, invite them to come up and tell us a little bit about who they are, maybe what schools they go to, uh, what they're working on. Hi, my name's uh, Caden Cousins. Uh, we, me and my brother, we go to Granger. We're on the football team. We actually just got back from practice. Uh, we're uh, from Troop 605. It's a uh, troop out of Magna. We're special uh, permits to Granger because my dad teaches there. Um, but yeah, we're just, I'm close to my Eagle Scout and I'm really trying to get it done quick. So. Good. Is Granger football going to be any good this year? Yeah, we're going to be a lot better this year. Good. And we'll look forward to watching that. Thank you for, for being here tonight with tonight's proceedings. So. Let's move to item five on our agenda, which is approving minutes from two prior, prior meetings of this body. It was July 21st regular meeting and July 28th. The council members have copies of those minutes before them. And we'd be ready now for uh, any action that you might have on those minutes. Mayor, I move for approval of the minutes of July 21st and July 28th, 2015. Second. Okay, we have a live motion before the body to approve the July 21st and July 28th regular meeting minutes as presented. All those in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? That uh, minute, Those minutes are approved unanimously. Uh, it's always good to uh, take some time during our meetings to recognize uh, those outstanding uh, that uh, work for the city and do uh, great work uh, in the name of the city and the programs. And tonight we've asked... Uh, Council Member Steve Vincent to take us through uh, the Employee of the Month for August 2015. Council Member. Thank you. Uh, Candace, would you please stand? Thank you. Uh, bear with me because Nancy wrote a book here. <laughs> I would like to nominate Candace Mayweather Whitaker for West Valley City Employee of the Month. Candace is one of those employees who excels in anything she does. She is dedicated and has a tremendous work ethic. She started over nine years ago as a part-time staff member at the Family Fitness Center, and due to her outstanding job performance and natural leadership abilities, was soon looked upon as someone who could manage and lead her coworkers. When her supervisor went on maternity leave, she easily stepped into her role and continued producing financially and participatory successful programs. She took her responsibility seriously and was heavily relied upon by her co-workers, subordinates, and su supervisors alike. When her supervisor decided not to return to the workforce, Candace was unquestionably the top candidate for the position and continued producing the division's success. Since that time, I've seen Candace's professional development success bloom. She is an example not only of those she supervises, but also to those who supervise her. She is a member of the URPA, the Utah Recreation and Parks Association, a board, board of directors as a young professional representative for the state of Utah, and was recently accepted into the URPA Leadership Academy. 
She was presented to URPA annual conference uh, numerous times. Col has presented numerous times. Colleagues in the state reach out to her for uh, direction and ideas. Her dedication to the profession not only helps other state agencies, it also makes her a tremendous asset to West Valley City Parks and Recreation Department. Candace has continued to increase community service with the program she initially took over and has also developed and implemented many new ones. Her creativity, direction, and positive attitude has created an environment which many youth want to be a part of. These are not just program participants, but also the young staff whom she supervises. She has a daunting task of being the first time boss and for many of these employees and, and trains them as trains them in such a way that they are not only better employees for West Valley and the Family Fitness Center, but they are also more productive and well-trained for future ambitions and goals. Her customer service goes far beyond the children, teens, and families she serves. She also has an outstanding customer service and loyalty to her staff, which make her a successful supervisor. I've received multiple compliments for the tremendous service which Candace provides the community. Some of the children in her program have difficult home lives, and many have said that these programs and facilities are their second home and a place where they feel safe and welcome. Much of this is due to Candace's commitment and passion for what she does. Candace's dedication to ongoing training has given her staff the tools they need to not only be successful in their responsibilities, but also to look for those children who crave and need the little extra attention to help to make their day just a little better. What a wonderful gift it is to, to our community. Second page. <laughs> For going above and beyond her dedication to the youth and families of our, our community, I would like to nominate Candace Mayweather Whitaker for West LA Employee of the Month Award. She truly deserves the recognition. Thank you. Nominated by Nancy Day. Candace, why don't you introduce who's here with you today? Okay. Um, I have my grandmother, my mother, my son Mason, he's sleeping, my husband Harley, um, Nancy, Valerie, Catherine, and one of my staff, Little Brie. We call her Little Brie because she's tiny. <laughs> and um, her boyfriend, I, I don't remember. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight and, and supporting Candace in this great honor. And we know you might have some uh, celebrating to do, and so we won't uh, hold it against you if you uh, decide to leave our proceedings a little bit early. But I uh, do want to thank you again for coming and, and supporting Candace in this great honor. Thank you. Let's turn to item seven now on our agenda, which is the time we set aside for uh, comments before we get into our meeting. We have public comments as well as time for um, our executive staff to uh, provide comments as well as time for the city council. Had a couple people uh, sign up tonight in the back for those, and um, we'll go through those. The first one was uh, Mr. Franklin Marsh, but uh, you might want to speak during the hearing on the tax increase and not just the general public comment. So we'll save for that. And then uh, the second one we had is Mr. Don Magnola. Would you like to speak now or do you come for the public hearing tonight? I'll speak now. Okay. And you've got your information here. You come to the microphone. And uh, as you've been here before, you know that you have uh, five minutes to speak your mind. Oh, I thought it was 15. <laughs> Well, you've all seen me in the last meeting, and I know you're sitting on the edge of your chair waiting for what I'm going to say today. Uh, 
The first thing I want to say is I'm a frequent uh, participant in the fitness center, and it is I am impressed the way it runs, not just for myself, but I see the kids there and the programs that they're through, and I I don't know who's responsible for all that, but it's a fine thing. Okay. Now, as you will recall, last time I was talking about making the relationship between owners and renters a little bit better. I listened to the entire session and I was impressed by the involvement of the public. That people came up, they were well informed, they knew the difference between A1 and A2 and all that. They disagreed with the changes that you wanted to make and they were very passionate about it. The one thing I took away from that, and that is that while the majority of the council were in favor of the changes, nobody knew exactly what the effect was going to be, whether it was going to be a little bit or a lot, and whether it was really going to be positive or negative. What I'm talking about, it's all positive, okay? There's no downsides to what I'm saying. And I'd like to tell you about something else. This long time ago, I had an experience now, as most of you know, FHA is under HUD. During the Nixon, when Nixon was president and George Romney was secretary of HUD, FHA loans all of a sudden were having problems. And HUD came to me and told me to go to the three cities, Detroit, San Francisco, and LA, that were having the most problems, and see if I come up with some suggestion. Well, the problem was that when a loan was in trouble, the lender was supposed to notify FHA, and they even had a form to fill out. Well, this form was not the, the thing that the lenders got all excited about. It, if it got done, it was done late, and then, of course, when FHA got it, they do some more processing. So by the time the field agent got out there, guess what? No longer. The weeds were going great. And uh, things might have been broken, like windows, it might be a flop house, it might be. And then FHA boarded everything up and took months before everything could be. Now, I came up with suggestions for everything, but the, the first one was real simple. I said the, vet, the lender, when they run the delinquency report, uh, run a second one with just FHA and then turn over that magnetic media to FHA and then FHA margins it, and then within 24, 48 hours at the most, their field agent could be out there. And they liked that idea, but I did one other thing. I've designed and installed hundreds of systems, and if I'm installing it, they get installed. But if I design the system and I'm not there, they don't always make it. So I contacted a friend of mine who just happened to be the president of the Mortgage Bankers Association, California Mortgage and Bankers Association. And I said, it would be great if your organization could follow up with this and work with FHA, would you be interested? He immediately called the national headquarters and, and everything worked hunky-dory. That's a positive story. And I'm saying that while that is not, it's not that critical here in West Valley, there is a difference in most cases between rentals and, and homeowners that live there. If you walk down one of those streets, you could probably point out the difference and be right 75% of the time. So I'm talking about something that ups everything for everybody. But I got something else out of the meeting the other, a couple of weeks ago, and that is that people want to do things the right way and attract businesses and homeowners and they're, I came to Utah because a company called me and asked me to work on their electric car project, okay? And I'm still doing that. And that's the long-term solution to all the pollution we have in this valley. But then we need to have a short-term solution. Particularly now that FHA, I mean that UCLA uh, Medical Department, and this is confirmed by uh, USC and Harvard Medical, there is a big difference. If a woman is pregnant and under polluted air, her offsprings 
has some problems. There can be heart damage, lung damage, and brain damage. As a matter of fact, autism is a major factor when a woman is exposed to this pollution. So I said there must be something that can be done to minimize that problem. And I have solutions to do that. Okay? Could you give it to us in 30 seconds now? I'm not going to tell you everything because it can't be done in 30 seconds. It's more like 30 minutes. And so what we need to do is set up a meeting where we can all sit together and talk about this. We need the council there. We need the staff there. You need to invite those people that were there two weeks ago that are concerned about their property and anybody else that can be a part of this. I think if you ask the realtors, and you got one sitting next to you, if they would prefer to see this kind of action taken, I think they'd be affirmative. Now, I, I have with me copies of the talk, the points, and I have the medical reports that deal with the studies at UCLA. Okay? So I'll pass this out. Did I make 30 seconds? Yeah. I think you were about five minutes exactly in your remarks, too. Oh, you must have practiced in the mirror before you came. Yeah, well, you know, he uh, has this allergy. I assume it's a allergy, seasonal one. This will solve that problem for him, too, okay? Thank you for your comments tonight. Okay, we'll move on. Turn our attention to our acting city manager. Do you have any comments for the council tonight, sir? Sir, thank you. Thank you. And then turn to the council members. Any comments that any council member would like to make regarding anything spoken or uh, any items going on in our community? You see. Seeing none, we'll thank those that uh, utilize this comment time and uh, time for civic dialogue. But uh, we'll move on now as we have a very important public hearing regarding uh, taking public input, input for our tentative budget in West Valley that will be our budget for the fiscal year of 2015-2016 and then we have some uh, resolution actions for that. So we'll turn the time over to our city manager now for introduction on that as we tackle these items. Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing regarding the receiving input from the, from the public regarding the tentative budget of West Valley, which then will be um, the action that the council is considering is to adopt the final budget. And if, if, with your approval, council, we'd like to uh, give a brief um, presentation on the, on the budget by our finance director, Mr. Welch, and hopefully that will answer some questions that perhaps some of the audience may have already that uh, that we can answer for them. So with your indulgence, we'd like to take about five minutes to go through that. Thank you, sir. Council, it's a pleasure to be before you again and present the annual tentative budget for adoption this year. Um, as you're aware, we've studied this uh, for some time and um, have come up with a budget that we feel like will be appropriate for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, what I'd like to do is go through uh, some information on our budget process, just answer any questions that you might have, and then also uh, discuss the action that we considered for tonight. The budget process is pretty regimented. It has some purposes that we that we try and accomplish. Uh, we try and reflect the in the creation of the budget the goals of the council, along with the um, the legal requirements that we have to put together a budget that's approved by the council for continuing operation for the next year. We also um, try and put together a document which promotes transparency and efficiency that uh, gives the public the opportunity to see what's happening with their tax dollars. And to that end, um, we put this together in a way that meets GFOA standards, which is the Government Finance Officers Association, which uh, allows us to meet a national standard of clarity. And uh, that's, that's kind of the purpose and the format that we try and put together with this. Some of the dates that we put together on this budget, they're significant. 
is we usually start this at the end of the year with our preliminary revenue projections. We'll go through and we'll look at the taxes that are coming in. We'll look at the fees that are being charged. Uh, we'll consider the levels and the effect of the economy um, on what's happening to the budget. We'll also have meetings with the city council and city manager to discuss the needs and the priorities of the city. With those priorities, we'll go back to the department heads and uh, formulate a proposal to bring to the city council and also uh, meet with the city council to uh, try to accomplish the goals that we can with the resources that, that we have to work with. There's a couple of significant dates that we have to meet. In May, there's a tentative budget which is adopted by state code. Um, and that tentative budget needs to either be adopted in June if we're going to operate on that budget for the upcoming year. If there's a, a tax adjustment to the rate, that um, adoption needs to take place the second week in August, and that's why we're holding the here to the meeting today. Some indicators that we have on the budget that, um, Jake. Well, you're a couple ahead already, you're fast. Anyway, um, we go through the revenue projections, which uh, give us an opportunity to take a look at the way, what's happening in the, the economy. We um, look at the population estimates for the city to determine uh, how that will impact our service levels and how that will also impact the revenue. Some of the uh, important indicators that we look at are what's happening here locally and nationally. And with, then we also look at historical trends to see where our revenues are expected to be this next year. So a budget, just like in your home budget, is a projection. It's an estimate of where you expect to be, and uh, that can be adjusted as you go throughout the year. But we do have to have a working document, and this is the one we're presenting to you. Then we'll address the expenditure projections. Uh, first, our priority is to see um, what we can do to meet the priorities of the council. Then we look at the changes in the cost structure of the city whether that would be capital expenditures and maintenance, uh, ongoing utility costs that we have. Of course, we have to pay for our fleet costs. Uh, things depreciate, things begin to wear down, and we will include those. Also, we cover our personnel costs and come back to this council with project with um, recommendations to maintain or else to change those levels based on what your, what your pleasure is. The numbers of our budget will look like this upcoming year. This chart, um, reflects our proposed budget for last year, which was fiscal year 2015, and the upcoming year, which is 2016. We, um, property tax is uh, set to be the same amount of money that we cl collected the previous year, plus new growth. New growth is defined as any new construction, and then that would also be adjusted by changes in personal property tax. So there's a couple of different things going into that calculation. We projected the same amount of tax this year that we collected the, the prior year. And part of that is a result of declining pro, uh, personal property tax values. So we, our growth has been pretty well offset by elimination of the growth in our personal property tax. Um, our budget has also includes a portion of revenues that have been saved up over the years in the form of fund balances and we're recommending based on the council's objectives to spend some of that reserves to take care of some necessary needed improvements and changes within our within the city operations. The next slide is a breakdown of where our revenues and expenditures actually come from. We have a pretty good balanced revenue system. About a third of our revenue comes from taxes, about a third of the revenue comes from uh, I'm sorry, sales tax, about a third from property tax, and a third from uh, utility fees and other fees. So we feel like that's been pretty resilient. When we've had downturns in the economy, they've certainly affected us, but uh, we've been able to pretty well ride those out because we have a pretty good balanced revenue structure. Expenditure, our largest expenditure is for our police department, which is uh, police, and then um, fire comes up third. Non-departmental is actually uh, a... Um, an expenditure line item that includes transfers to many of our different operations, such as the fitness center, cultural cultural center, uh, golf courses, and, and other operations of the city. That uh, pretty well concludes the slides that I have for you. I'd like to, for just a moment, explain uh, for those that are here in the audience 
uh, why we're holding a truth in taxation hearing for the purpose of adjusting the tax rates. Um, each year, the city, not the city, but the county, considers um, appeals for property tax values from large businesses and large property taxpayers. If they go in and they protest those, the value of their assessment in an effort to reduce their property tax bill, uh, they are often awarded what's called a judgment, and that's, that's through the um, Board of Equalization. That judgment then is revenue that is taken from any of the taxing entities that, uh, that would include the county, the school districts, the special service districts, and the city. And that money that comes from them is rebated then back to that individual or that business that has, pro has protested their values. Now, this year, the amount that was rebated that came out of West Valley City was $200,000 to cover the, um, the money that was rebated to some of these larger taxpayers. By state law, we're allowed to receive the same revenue that we collected the previous year in our property taxes. And in order to make up that hole that would have been created by a, re by a rebate, uh, we're considering a property tax increase or a change. It's actually a shift from the businesses that were rebated the money to the rest of the taxpayers. So the way it really works out is that $200,000 was underpaid by the rest of the city and overpaid by the person who protested their uh, property tax values. Uh, we're proposing that the property tax rate be adjusted to cover that $200,000. In previous years, we've considered this for a number of years just to make sure that we don't have a hole in the budget and it also fairly represents the property tax burden which the taxpayers should be carrying. That's the end of my presentation, unless you have questions. Hey, any, any questions for our finance director today? Mr. Vincent. So the $200,000, what does that represent per household? It represents a uh, change of just a little over $3 per year. $3, okay. Mm -hmm. Council Member Hume. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor Putin. Uh, the revenue we have, the number you put up there, is a seventy-four million nine hundred sixty-three thousand and four hundred forty-seven. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, so the revenue is uh, interesting to me. Is the revenue and also the expenditure that they are the same number? You know, it's just a good math. I'd be, happy, I'd be happy to explain it to you. Yeah. By law, uh, municipalities are required to submit a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. um, we wish our feds would do that. but uh, So as a matter of uh, operations, we have to match the revenues that we have with our expected expenditures. If we don't have the revenue for it, we can't spend it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Welch, um, if somebody in the audience or somebody watching at home or just the public in general wanted more information on the budget, maybe just, you know, how much is being spent by the by animal control or how much is being spent by the fitness center, where could they come upon this information? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Russian, Russian they um, can go to our website and if you go to the government link and under government it will have finance, we'll have our, our budget posted. Uh, also included on that budget link is a property tax calculator where they can put their own house value in and it will detail uh, an estimate of what their property tax bill would be. It also estimates the tax burden that they would pay to each of the other service districts. Oh, yes, it's up on the up on the screen for your review right now. Thank you. Any further questions that you might have? Time of our city finance director. Thank you for your presentation and uh, your work uh, through this uh, many month uh, many months work of budget budgeting and the budget process. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll now uh, open up the public hearing. Any of you that have come to speak uh, regarding uh, our fiscal budget for the year 2015-2016 and the associated action with that. And again, Mr. Marsh, did you want to lead this off? some property west of Bangor some years ago. 
my wife and I went on an LDS mission. And when we come back, I drove around. My wife was in the nursing home because she had liver cancer. And I drove around West Valley City. When I, we owned the property west of Bangor, I had a vehicle and I didn't have it licensed for about two months. And they come and put a, a fine on it because I didn't have it licensed. Since I've driven around West Valley City, I have found, and the house we used to live in has been trashed out. It's no longer, it's been on the market for over two years. I have found 11 homes that have been trashed out in, Salt, in West Valley City. Anytime you see any more, there's six to eight vehicles, more than six to eight vehicles parked in front of a house. You know, there's more than one family living in that house. And when you got more than one family living in that house, they're going to trash out the house. And whoever owns that house, is going to lose money, and you're going to lose money because you can't get the taxes from that house. So my suggestion is to you, ladies and gentlemen, you need to do something about the overpopulation in West Valley City. <coughs> Having more than one family in one house, because eventually it's going to ruin the whole city. Now, why isn't that somebody is going around and checking these houses and to find out why there's so many vehicles parked in front of these houses? And investigating, knocking on the door and finding out how many families are living in that house. You're going to lose money all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I have to say to you. And I hate to see West Valley City go down, but it's going to go down unless you do something about it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming and sharing your comments of what's going on in our city tonight. Anyone else come to address us on the budget? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and turn to the council to consider resolution 15-132, which is adopting our final budget and uh, uh, determining the tax rate for this year. Council members. approval of resolution 15-132. Second. Okay, we have a live motion before the body to cons to approve resolution 15-132, which is our budget. Any discussion to that motion? I will just say as we, you know, it's some things that uh, we work on here in the city council is the beginning of things to where we get, uh, you know, a subdivision going or, a, you know, a new restaurant plaque going and some things are the end, and this is the end and the culmination of a lot of work by this body as, as well as the staff to set the priorities and and be good stewards of the, the tax money. And I think we've accomplished those goals and as we uh, continue to move forward in this year and, and see other things that uh, we'll have opportunities to open our budget and make some adjustments as, as uh, circumstances uh, dictate. So I'm ready to, to move on and with that comment, we'll call for the question of the motion and ask all those in favor of approving resolution 15-132 to please say aye. aye aye are there any opposed okay that motion passes unanimously of those that are present today and we now have a budget to operate on this year so thank you for that we have one resolution uh tonight which is resolution numbered uh, resolution 15-133 and listed as uh, item 9a uh, and we'll turn to Mr. Isaac, to introduce that for us, please. Excuse me. Thank you very much. This is a uh, resolution that would allow the approval of a, or allows the approval of a supplemental federal aid agreement with UDOT for improving uh, the traffic signals along uh, 4100 South at the intersections of 1300 West, 2700 West, and 4000 West. Um, West Valley City's uh, fiscal impact in this with this regard is about $27,000, but UDOT, uh, having received a federal aid agreement, uh, will 
take up most of the cost for that. So much needed improvements along those intersections. Okay, Council members, do you have need of any further information or questions on this item? If not, a motion would be in order. Mayor Pro Tem, I move for approval of Resolution 15-133 to approve traffic flow. Second the motion. Okay. I have a live motion before the City Council to approve Resolution 15-133, a yeah. federal aid supplement agreement for improvements on 4100 South. Is there any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, we'll ask all those in favor to please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? It's also unanimous of those council members present. We'll look forward to seeing improved traffic flow at those uh, intersections on 4100. Uh, item 10 is our consent agenda. There are uh, two items ratifying city manager's appointments of uh, Ms. Deanne Varney as deputy city recorder and Ms. Angel Peasley as also deputy city recorder, I guess. Uh, anything you'd like to add to that tonight? Well, just to say that we're excited about uh, those changes, as you all know, and I, if I could, if um, Ms. McKendrick doesn't hit me, I'd like to publicly uh, say how much we've appreciated her service. She is retiring from the city after, I think, over 60 years of service. <laughs> and she, uh, can I actually say some more things about you? She's uh, going to be missed. She's provided uh, many years of valuable service to the city, and uh, so we will miss her. But we're uh, also excited about the uh, two new employees that have been, that will be appointed as deputy city recorders uh, this evening. And uh, we also have the city recorder yet to be uh, uh, brought before the council for approval. So with that, um, again, thank you very much to Ms. McKendrick for those years of service. Thank you. Move for approval of the two items on the consent agenda. Okay, any discussion to approving these two resolutions tonight? All in favor, please say aye. I'll second it. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was the city recorder test. Good job. Okay, we have a mo Thank you, Mr. Vincent, for that second. And then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Uh, those uh, two appointments are ratified. Uh, any need for executive session or any other business tonight? No, sir. Okay. Seeing none, we'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 This body is stand adjourned. And we have three uh, agency meetings, which will also uh, uh, concern dealing with uh, appointments as uh, uh, secretaries to our boards tonight. So we'll turn the time over for our RDA meeting. Yes, we'll call to order the West Valley City RDA meeting. And note that we've had an opening ceremony and roll we'll call that Mr. Northfelt and Mr. Bigelow are absent. Um, first on our agenda, we have the minutes from July 7th and July 21st. Do we have any discussion or a motion? Madam Chair, I move for approval of the minutes of July 7th and July 21st, 2015. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Any more discussion? Seeing them call to vote, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any approved? I mean, any, any opposed? None, so motion passes. Uh, any communications or report from the executive officer? Ma'am, thank you. Okay, we have um, three resolutions. First being in agreement with DRH. Would you like to explain that for us? Thank Mr. you very much, Isaac? yes. This is a, uh, an agreement with DRH company for to provide the city with uh, uh, real estate broker and professional property management services. We've contracted with this company before for several years, and this essentially is just an extension of that contract. Okay, thank you. Any discussion or motion on this resolution? Madam Chair, uh, just a quick comment, and then I'll make the motion that uh, as you look outside here, there's been a lot of work over the past few years on our Fairborn Station project, and there's been uh, houses and apartment buildings are changed into hotels and soon to be medical offices and uh, a lot of that uh, is in in part to the work that uh, DRH company has provided in assistance to our city staff and so I would move that we approve the agreement to uh, which is resolution 1544 to continue that relationship second okay, re resolution 
15, 14? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's at 44. Okay, any more discussion on the item? So, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that motion passes. We have resolution 1515. Thank Richard. you. This, uh, as we just did in the last meeting, this also ratifies the appointment of of Deanne Barney, uh, this particular resolution of Deanne Barney as Deputy Secretary of the RDA. Thank you. Any discussion or motion on the resolution? I move for approval of uh, resolution 15-15. Second. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in, per all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Um, move on to resolution 1516. Thank you, ma'am. This is uh, also uh, requesting to ratify the appointment of Angel uh, Peasley to uh, also as Deputy Secretary of the Redevelopment Agency. Okay. Um, any discussion or motion on 1516? Move for approval of resolution 1516. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor of approving 1516, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Seeing none, that motion passes. Seeing no other business, um, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion, or meeting adjourned. Uh, we call to order the uh, regular meeting of the, the Western City uh, Housing Authority tonight. Uh, Opening ceremony was conducted by uh, me earlier tonight, and uh, roll call. We have uh, the quorum here tonight, except for uh, the mayor, uh, Big Glow, and also uh, Councilman Northwell is not here tonight. Um, we have number four item is approval of minutes, uh, July 7, 2015. So I will turn that over to the council. I would move for approval of the minutes of July 7. So have the motion, and we need a second. A second. Uh, thank you. All favor of uh, approving this approval of minutes, uh, July 7, 2015, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say no. So approval of uh, minutes uh, pass it unanimously. Uh, Mr. Isaac, number five, number six, the communication, also report of executive director. You have anything? Do not have anything this evening, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Isaac. Uh, re resolution, we have uh, two resolutions tonight. Uh, one is 15-05, uh, uh, and I will turn it over to Mr. Isaac. Thank you, sir. This is also an, uh, to ratify the appointment of Deanne Barney as Deputy Secretary of the Housing Authority. Thank you. I will turn it over to the council. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of resolution 15-05. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay, none. Uh, all favor of uh, approving resolution 15-01, um, 05, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Uh, none. So uh, resolution 15-05 uh, pass it unanimously. And item number B, 15-06, uh, Mr. Isaac. Thank you, sir. This is also to ratify the executive director's appointment of. Uh, Angel P Peasley as also as Deputy Secretary of the Housing Authority. Thank you. I will turn it over to the Council. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of Resolution 15-06. Thank you. I need a motion. Second. I second. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I just want to say a few things and then we can uh, do the motion. I just wanted to know as uh, Mr. As the, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Deanne Varney and also uh, Angel Peasley, they are very very good employees and uh, they will do, they are very good for this position. And also I want to say thank you to uh, Sherry McKendrick. Uh, I know she has done a great thing for our city. And uh, now um, we can uh, uh, approve the resolution. All favor of approving this uh, motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say no. Okay, this motion passes unanimously. So we have uh, one more to go. Number eight, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. So all favor of approving this motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, uh, please say no. This mo motion passes un unanimously. We adjourn.
come by the last year? I, I would love to. All the order in the West Valley Building Authority. Uh, we've had our roll call and opening ceremony, and we need approval of the minutes of June second. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of the minutes of June second, two thousand fifteen. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We have no report or communications, so we'll turn to the two resolutions. Thank you, sir. Again, this is to ratify the executive director's appointment of uh, Deanne Barney as deputy secretary of the uh, municipal building authority. Is there a motion for or a discussion to this resolution? Mr. Chair, I move approval of resolution 15-04. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A uh, motion carries. Uh, we have number B. Mr. Isaac. Thank you, sir. This is to also to ratify the, <clears throat> excuse me, executive director's appointment of Angel Peasley to the, uh, as de deputy secretary of the municipal building authority. Yeah, any motion or discussion? Mr. Chair, I for approval of 15-05. We have a motion, second, and a couple of seconds. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We need one more motion. Motion to adjourn. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Um, this meeting is adjourned.